ready to open the hood, use tool for the tutorials, and for car parts, the right idea is the Mr. Auto app. Easy, fast, and with better prices than on the website. You will find the bulk EGR valve used in the video exclusively on the Mr. Auto website and through the link in the description. Turn your engine off. Pull up the handbrake. Pull on the bonnet release lever and open the bonnet. For safety reasons, we recommend unplugging the battery. To do this, we recommend watching the video how to replace the car battery on a Golf 6 1.6 TDI. There are a multitude of symptoms linked to an EGR breakdown, loss of power, injection issues, appearance of warning lights. In order to change the EGR valve, you'll need to lift the front of the vehicle and remove the passenger side wheel to gain full access. Brace the front of the vehicle and put it in the two axle stands. We strongly suggest watching the tutorial, raising your vehicle safely, before carrying out this step. You will then be able to take off the wheel. Don't forget to slide it under the vehicle. Remove the crankcase. You will now need to remove the lower mud guard. Using a Torx 25 screwdriver, remove the seven screws holding the mud guard. And remove it. On this engine is linked to the coolant system. The coolant system needs to be bled beforehand. For more information on this step, it is essential to watch the video How to Drain and Purge the Golf 6 1.6 DDI Coolant System. Take off the engine cover. To access the EGR valve, you have to first remove several elements. Remove the air intake cover, then remove the intake duct. To do this, lift the top end and gently pull it back and forth. Unhook the air hose from the air box. Then, using a thin flatted screwdriver, remove it from the air box. Using a flathead screwdriver, disconnect the sensor from the airflow meter. Then remove the breather. Using a ratchet and a 7mm socket, unscrew the air intake duct clamp. Unhook the two vacuum hoses from the air intake duct. Unscrew the air box using a ratchet, an extension and a 5mm Allen socket. You can now remove the airbox and it's docked. To prevent dirt from falling onto the duct, plug it with a small cloth. You can now see the gas recirculation duct. Its access is difficult. Using a ratchet, an extension and a Torx 27 socket, unscrew the two retaining screws from the upper part and remove them. For easy access to the EGR valve, you need to remove the cotton shaft on the passenger side. To remove the cotton shaft, you must block the rotation of the disc. Insert a thin flathead screwdriver that can slip in between the two sides of the disc. Then unscrew the six screws that hold the cotton shaft to the gearbox using an M8 12-point socket. Rotate the cotton shaft and lock it as you unscrew it so you have easy access to all the screws. Using a pry bar and an M24 12-point socket, unscrew the hub screw.
In order to remove the cotton shaft, you must disengage the control arms from the stub axle. To do this, use a ratchet and a 16mm socket and unscrew the ball change from the control arm. Disengage the control arm. You can now remove the cotton shaft. Using a ratchet and a Torx 13 socket, unscrew the upper retaining screw of the particulate filter. Unclip the heat shield. And remove the electrical sheath from its housing. You can now access the clamp that connects the particulate filter to the turbocharger. Unscrew it with a ratchet, an extension and a 5mm Allen socket. Pry the metal clamping clip with a flat screwdriver. Using a 13mm spanner, unscrew the two nuts from the particulate filter from the bracket. Then unscrew the two support nuts that keep it on the engine using a ratchet and a 13mm socket. Remove the bracket. You can now disconnect the particulate filter from the turbocharger and remove the clamping clip. Remove the nut holding the hose with a 10mm spanner. Then, using a 10mm spanner, Unscrew the screw that holds the hose to the metal plate next to the diesel filter on the engine mount. Using pliers, which you can find in the video description, remove the clamp that connects the cooling hose to the EGR valve. Then, pull on the hose to remove it. Using a ratchet and a Torx 27 socket, Unscrew the front retaining screw of the turbo's oil outlet. Disconnect the oil lever sensor with a flat screwdriver and unhook its retaining bracket. Using a ratchet and Torx 17 socket, unscrew the screw and the turbo's oil inlet hose. Use paper towels as oil may leak out. Unclip the heat shield and remove it. Remove the EGR valve's air supply. Using a ratchet, an extension and a Torx 27 socket, unscrew the two screws holding the lower part of the second gas recirculation duct. Do the same with the lower part of the recirculation duct like you did with the upper part. Then, remove the duct. Using a ratchet and a 12mm socket, unscrew the two nuts holding the second gas recirculation duct to the exhaust manifold. Then, remove the duct. It is now necessary to remove one of the upper retaining screws from the turbo oil return hose using a 13mm spanner so that it can be moved to remove the EGR valve. Using the pliers, remove the second cooling hose from the EGR valve. Disconnect the EGR valve. Using a ratchet and a Torx 27 socket, remove the lower left retaining screw of the EGR valve. Then the lower right screw. Then the upper left screw. Then, the upper right screw. You can now remove the EGR valve. Patience is key here. Try not to apply too much force on the various components when removing the valve. All parts used in this tutorial are supplied by our trusted partners. These partners also help us create as many video tutorials as possible. Check them out in the description below.
you can find the bulk parts and products used in the video on the Mr. Auto website and in the link in the description. Take hold of your new EGR valve and compare it with the old one to ensure that both are identical. Take the opportunity to clean the various ducts that can be clogged. Don't forget to replace the various metal gaskets that are supplied in the kit. Install the new EGR valve. Loosely screw in the lower left screw. Then screw the lower right screw back in, then the upper right, then the upper left. Finish tightening the lower left screw. Tighten the upper screw, holding the turbo oil return hose back on. Remove the protective cover from the solenoid valve. Then reinstall the gas recirculation pipe to the exhaust manifold. Screw the two nuts back onto the exhaust manifold. Screw the two screws of the duct back onto the EGR valve. Then refit the second hose to the engine and reinstall the two lower retaining screws onto the EGR valve. Then screw it back in. Refit the cooling hose to the EGR valve and then refit the clamp using the pliers. Reconnect the air supply. Put the heat shield back in. Reconnect the EGR valve. It is now time to refit the turbo oil inlet hose. We recommend replacing both seals with new ones if you can. Then screw the hose back on. Then reinstall the turbo oil return hose screw. Then screw it back in. Position the particulate filter clamp on the turbo. Reinstall the particulate filter. Once in position, lock the clamp without tightening it. Refit the particulate filter bracket and then refit the two bracket nuts to the engine. Then screw the two particulate filter nuts back onto the bracket. Reconnect the second cooling hose to the EGR valve. Then reattach the collar with the pliers. Screw the lower hose support back on. Then screw the upper hose support back on. You can now put the carbon shaft in place. Put it in position, then insert it into the hub. You can now screw the six screws back into the gearbox. Tighten the six screws on the gearbox using the screwdriver technique. You can find the class 12 point extension in the description of the video, which will enable you to easily tighten the cotton screws. You can now put the hub screw back in place. Reinstall the ball joint in the control arms. Then screw the nuts back on. Reclip the oil lever sensor connector guide. Then reconnect the sensor. The first stage of tightening the hub bolt is done in the hanging wheel and with a torque wrench. And the second phase will be carried out once the vehicle is on the ground with an additional 90 degree tightening. You can now put the lower mud guard back on. Then screw it back in. Put the crankcase back in. You can now put the wheel back on your vehicle and put it back on the ground. Screw the particulate filter clamp back onto the turbo. Clip the electric sheath back in. Put the heat shield back in. 
screw the particulate filter retaining screw back in place. You can now screw the two upper retaining screws of the gas recirculation duct back onto the engine. Reinstall the airbox and intake duct. We clip the airbox. Reinstall the inlet duct and then reattach the duct clamp. Reclip the two air hoses onto the duct. Reconnect the breather. Reconnect the airflow meter. Reinstall the air hose on the duct and reconnect it to the air box. Screw the airbox back on. Reconnect the inlet pipe. Close the air intake cover. Reinstall the engine cover. Reconnect the battery. Before using your vehicle, you have to put the coolant fluid back in and purge the air from the circuit. Watch the video, how to train and purge the coolant system of Golf 6 1.6 TDI. To complete the operation, take advantage of the opportunity to clean your injection system by directly pouring injector cleaner onto your reservoir, which will help avoid numerous problems linked to injection and will guarantee an optimal engine ignition. Operation completed. Hi, it's Theo from Tool. I hope this video has helped you a lot in your car maintenance. We would be super grateful if you could spread the word so that we can produce even more tutorials. Simply give us a like, a comment and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us boost the channel and help the whole community. Thanks a lot and have a great one.